Got it. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humbly offered obeisances. All glories to his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Vandra Kalpa Turubis Cha Kripa Sindhu Vaivya Cha Patita Nam Pavanevan Bio Vaishnavavio Namo Namaha. So on the occasion of His Holiness Mukunda Goswami Maharaj, 80th birthday, I have to say, I remember in San Francisco, maybe it was 68, late 67, possibly early 68. We were all so young. And this lady came to the temple. She'd been directed there by uh, Vishnu John, who was, uh, I guess it was 68 because by that point he was Vishnu John. So um, he was uh, initiated in Easter of 68. So it must have been a little bit after that. So this lady comes and she was 35 years old. We were thinking, what does this old lady want? <laughs> you know, the oldest person at that point was maybe 27, 28 years old, max 29. So it's not impressive that somebody's living a long, long life. So many long lives are there. Prabhupada would point out the trees. What's impressive is that. Your long life has been dedicated and surrendered and offered to the service of Srila Prabhupada and his ISKCON mission. And my good fortune, totally undeserved even until this day, is that by a happen chance, um, I, I got to meet you in Portland, Oregon. And uh, from that meeting, that happen chance meeting, moving forward through your grace and your kind mercy, I was introduced to Srila Prabhupada via the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto in three parts, but the first part on the top of a mountain near sister's Oregon. And there's many times life-changing events in our life. And sometimes people kind of drop that life-changing in a kind of casual manner. But this was not at all casual because it truly was life-changing. By seeing that beautiful Bhagavatam, which you showed us after dinner, um, by touching it, and in particular, seeing three lines of this one repet one repetitive line, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I became convinced I wanted to meet the person who wrote this book. On top of that, you handed the book over and I'm looking at the cover and it was some kind of an outer space type of imagery to my mind. And uh, there was <clears throat> these little round circles with flower petals, lotus flowers, with four-handed blue skin people on them. But then there was a larger situation where another blue skinned person with four arms was lying on a snake. And that snake was some kind of a cobra with his hoods overhead. And I'm just looking at what is this? And I looked up at you and I said, who is this? And in a very sober response, you said, this is God. And that was the moment the connection began, followed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because as a mixed up, um, ungrounded hippie, most of us were in that category. We had various ideas about the concept of God. 
One of the ideas was, um, well, God didn't even exist. Another idea was um, made famous by a Time magazine cover, God is dead. Another idea was we were all God. And that didn't resonate with me because I was like terribly sure if I was God, there was no hope for this world. But I held out for hope. And you kindly gave me that hope in the form of introducing me to Srila Prabhupada via the Bhagavatam. Yours was a brief stopover, and you told us you were on your way to San Francisco. And after that, you'd be going to um, India. At the time, you were a grihastra, so your um, newly wedded wife was with you. Actually, the whole visit was kind of interesting because um, we had left our mountain had a day off and going to another mountain. And when we came back, there was a little car there who would come up and see us. Not many people knew where we were. And uh, we had a small wooden cabin without any running water inside and uh, just a, a wood stove for running water and all bathing purposes and all that kind of stuff. There was a nearby stream, which was pure enough to just drink straight out of. So we opened up the door and there you were. Why, it was our old friends from Portland and you and Sam had gone to school together. You were really old buddies, had gone to read college together. And there was Jan, there was Joni, your sister. Sam and Joni had been high school classmates. They'd been good friends. And, uh, you know, generally by the Vedic tradition, you welcome a guest to your house, offer them a place to sit, offer them some cooling refreshment to drink. But you'd already welcomed yourself in. And so we were thinking we should offer something. So we asked, would you like some LSD? And, uh, replied no not with any attitude just just no that was unusual we thought i mean as far as unusual goes the fact that you had gotten married we considered a little unusual because in those days of the hippie sampradaya mindset um marriage was looked upon as totally unnecessary so people didn't bother to do that. We'd just, you know, get together and start living together. So you're married. And uh, you met a Swami. And what else happened? By the way, you had new names. You, formerly Mike, are now Mukunda. And your wife, formerly Jan, was Janaki. Joni was still Joni. And, oh, by the way, there was Janaki cooking something on the wood stove, some little dough balls that she patted out flat, put on the wood fire and they blew up. Um, it's really fascinating. But this became our first Krishna Prashadam. And by the way, you are now vegetarians. That's no big deal nowadays. But at that time in the sixties, vegetarianism was kind of looked upon with great suspicion. Like maybe you were also a communist. So all these changes, all these changes had occurred in your life. And you looked very happy. You looked very peaceful. Further um, prompting me to consider, I want to meet this person because we had met other persons before and each time it was a total letdown. And Sam was always saying, we have to get a guru. And I was saying, yeah, you go ahead and get a guru. I don't want anyone to tell me what to do with my life. You know, typical stupid American woman. But now the time was there, the right person was there. And by your grace, um, it all came together. So you told us you were going to San Francisco to start a temple. And I asked an awkwardly profound question, what's a temple? And in your very um, sober voice, you said, it's a storefront painted white. 
because that was the experience to, to date, um, one little temple in New York City. And it was a storefront, a former storefront, and it had been painted white. Anyway, we said we would come to, we would come, we would come, because you said, why don't you come and help us? And we agreed we would do that, but we had to stay on the mountain when the, until the contract ended. We were there on a government, um, he, Sam had a government job, fire watch. And uh, the contract said, first snow, that as soon as the snow fell for the first time, then that was it, you could go. So the next morning, I opened the door to go out to answer the call of nature. And to utter astonishment, there was snow on the ground. Not deep, but there was snow. And there were footprints. And I saw a mountain lion had passed right by our door. But that wasn't as exciting as realizing the snow's here. We can go. Of course, the rangers saw it differently. They said, that snow won't last. And called on their little, with these little devices where you could communicate. But I looked at the contract and it didn't say how long the snow had to last. It just said for snow. So we packed up and caravaned behind you, driving down to California to San Francisco. And you and Janaki will be staying in Berkeley. And myself, Jam, and Joni found a place on a <laughs> on a little alley, a little, a little road in the Mission District, and uh, Lucky Alley was the name, and a little place to rent. And things started heating up. You and Sham would spend your entire days looking for a suitable place. And eventually that place was found. But if you had not come to Check us out if you had not come to the top of the mountain, if you had not brought the Bhagavatams, if Janaki hadn't made Prasada, who knows where we would be if we even still exist. So your 80 years have been well earned. And I thank you very much. I always remember that moment. I thank you very much for coming to the top of that mountain and saving our lives and introducing me to his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.